hey you guys, it's Spotlight on New Mexico's best show for interviewing entertainers and friends of entertainment. Stick with us, we've got an awesome show today. We've, uh, yeah, we've got uh, Frank Cullen from Albuquerque Film Club. We've got magician Jordan Jonas and so much more. So stick with us. the best entertainment show where we uh, put the spotlight on and showcase some uh, entertainment entertainers locally and also friends of entertainment. I am Sarah Kennedy. And I'm James Morrow. And we have an awesome show for you, including our first guest. Here he is. Please welcome from the Albuquerque Film Club, Mr. Frank Cullen. How you doing? Good. How are you? Fine, thank you. Good. Thanks for being here today. My pleasure. Awesome. awesome. What you got there? Poster for our next show. Uh, at the Gill Theatre. This is uh, the French film uh, Les Diaboliques. Uh, caused quite a sensation when it came out in 55. Uh -huh. Yeah, the French club is coming. The uh, local uh, Alliance Francaise, we're partnering with them. We partner with a number of uh, organizations. Next up, by the way, is uh, Nosferatu, Ooh. the oh, uh, German good. horror film yes. Dracula. Vlad. Yes. Uh, that's going to be at the Chemo on Halloween night at 8 o'clock, and uh, the Albuquerque Film Club is partnering with uh, Chemo on that. Oh, great. That's Hope awesome. you all come. The Chemo yeah. is a great place to show a scary movie. Cause yeah, yes. and at Live Orchestra, Alloy Orchestra. What? Yeah. That's got to add some ambiance yeah. to that one. Right. Oh, that's great. That's I love awesome. that. So uh, the first question I have for you today is, uh, what really inspired you to start the Albuquerque Film Club? With uh, well, I've done about a half a dozen series at the uh, Gill Theatre uh, with uh, Keith Fenley, and um, le less than a year ago, I think last December, Keith said, why don't we uh, try and um, put some more cohesion to our showing, our revival film programming? He asked me to c partner with him, and uh, that brought in Donald McNeely, who is my partner, and uh, co-founder of the American Vaudeville Museum, which is the umbrella organization for the Albuquerque Film Club. And Donald does all of our design work, as you've just seen, and uh, runs the business. Um, without him, uh, there is no Albuquerque Film Club. There's no American Vaudeville Museum. But uh, right after we agreed to do that, I brought a couple of people on board. Uh, Valerie Scott from the Albuquerque Theater Guild, mm -hmm. who's on the board there. And uh, I lecture on film occasionally at UNM, several classes. And uh, I asked uh, Terry Cutler Broyles uh, to join us on the steering committee. We don't have a, uh, a president, vice president, that sort of thing. We just have a steering committee. Whoever talks the loudest and the longest, <laughs> <laughs> hey, folks, uh, sort of steers the decisions. Uh, that's not tr quite true. And then uh, Ernest Sturdivant, who's a musical director, uh, a SAG and uh, equity actor uh, locally here, he came on. Uh, and then uh, Marie Davis, who's an educational consultant from the East, uh, who's just moved, moved back here, uh, moved here. Uh, she's on, uh, she's on our committee. And rounding it up is Steve Suttle, who's a retired jurist and probably one of the nation's top experts on silent films. So we've got a good bunch of people. That's amazing. That's great. Uh, that's Would you uh, like to get a word in edgewise? No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're We're talking. You. That's great. We're All putting right. the spotlight on well, you. Yeah, exactly. This is for <laughs> you and your, uh, your, your film club. And could you tell us, like, what does that entail? What does the film club do for the Guild, um, the Guild Seminar? Well, we started uh, in January with a four-day showing of um, Douglas Fairbanks, Thief of Baghdad, did very well. We signed up about 35, 40 members then, then right then and there the, that week. And uh, we're up well over 80 members now. Uh, people pay $15 a year. And they can get into our showings, which are the second weekend of every month, uh, for two bucks. Oh, that's awesome. Instead of the normal five bucks matinee, one o'clock, oh. Saturdays and Sundays. Yeah. That's, yeah. The, that's yeah. the pitch, folks. <laughs> um, and uh, we, our, our slogan is uh, exceptional films of every era and many nations. And to choose our 2014, we sent out a list of the 30, about 30 films that were most requested and asked all of our members to vote on them. So they picked up, they picked the 2014 uh, series and we're very pleased with their, with their choices. 
That's awesome. So what, I mean, I know you guys uh, partner up with the Kimo also, but what do you think makes the Guild such a special place oh, for Albuquerque? Yes. The Guild, the Guild is one of our, uh, I'm only here, I've only been in uh, this area uh, since 2006. And right off the bat, I glommed on the uh, on the Guild Theater. It's it's really a cultural treasure of Albuquerque's. How Absolutely. many how many art houses are there left in the movie e exhibition business? You know, you can count the, this one that's struggling up in Santa Fe. I know that just recently reopened under new management, but uh, you know, I immediately uh, buddied up with uh, Keith and uh, and you know. By the way, I have to say something. Keith is probably the most mo modest man in show business. I saw him uh, a few nights ago at uh, Basement Films, and he did a he did a routine. He just riffed, and he was the guy is very funny. Mm -hmm. You know, I looked at him and I said, "Who are you? I don't know you. I've known you six years. I don't know you." <laughs> he, he was uh, amazing, uh, but it's it, I'm so happy to work with him. He is the easiest person in the world to work with, and um, he's made it very. He seems to be happy with us, and we're very happy with him. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. So uh, where can people find more information about the Albuquerque Film Club online? Absolutely. Uh, go to www.vaudeville.org forward slash AFC, Albuquerque Film Club. Awesome. That's amazing. And you can go to the Gills, you can go to the Gills uh, <laughs> site as well. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Oh, yeah. And then, uh, so do you want to go ahead and give out your email, too, so in case people want to get a hold of you? Sure. Uh, also, your PIN number. Let's get <laughs> yeah, all, all your personal do. information out there. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm fortunate, fortunately, I'm so old that I can't remember any of that stuff. <laughs> no. But I, I, I can remember promotional. Well, here's the, here's the good thing. We've got another segment with Frank coming up here. So stick with us through the break, and uh, we'll have more with him and give you that information then. See you soon. Stick with us. Lessman's Pro Audio. Lessman's Reynolds offers backline, DJ light, video cameras, projectors, PA systems, concert sound systems. Rent our PA systems, all are iPod compatible, as low as $50. My father taught me a lot about life without ever saying a word. When I was a little girl, my friends were all just like me. His never were. Hello, hello. Uh, didn't you bring them, George? I thought you were No, no, I brought them last time. Huh? You're all right. <laughs> I forgot. Well, all right, so all right. we'll be with I used to wonder, why would a Jew, a Christian, and a Muslim ever get together? It was him! And then I finally got it. They had a lot more in common than donuts. Friendship. Pass it on. A message from the Foundation for a Better Life. Everybody needs a helping hand. Take a look at your fellow man and tell me what can I do today. Uh, hey, let me get that for you. Helping out. If that ain't what it's all about, tell me what. Thank you, young man. No problem. Courtesy. Pass it on. Don't worry about me. I got it. A message from the Foundation for a Better Life. for sticking with us. Uh, we've got, for a whole another segment, from the Albuquerque Film Club, Frank Cullen. So welcome him back, yay! Thank you. Thank hey. you. Welcome back. Thank I don't suppose you thought of that email address. Yes, I did. Oh, yeah? F. Cullen. F. Cullen. F, as in Frank. Mm -hmm. C, as in Charlie. U -L -L -E -N at vaudeville.org. That's V-A-U-D-E-V-I-L-L-E dot org. Fantastic, Frank. So <laughs> Slash line <laughs> AFC. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. There's more to it. Awesome. Cool. So uh, <laughs> you not only are uh, big into the Albuquerque Film Club, you also are pretty much an expert on, on show business through the ages in vaudeville, too, yes? Oh, I'd like to think so. Oh, awesome. So how did you get interested in, in like, knowing the history? I was a kid performer. Yeah? 
Yeah, I did uh, bottom of the barrel USO shows back in my, uh, right out of high school, uh, when there was uh, between the Korean and the Vietnam War. Uh, and I, I, television at that time was using, it was live, so they had to use people who could uh, function and not blow it just because a set fell down or a cameraman walked by on a second story window. And those were vaudevillians. I mean, all the comedy shows were headed up by vaudevillians, right up to, uh, you know, uh, Jackie Gleason. Uh, and I tried to find out more and more about it. I started collecting stuff when I was about 10. Uh, our collections now, <laughs> 67 years later, are at the University of Arizona in Tucson. Um, at the, probably the largest collection of vaudeville stuff outside of the Library of Congress. Uh, I hate I, to stop you there, but no, why don't I, I'm you? Sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm, I'm not, apparently I've lived under a rock. I don't know what vaudeville is. Maybe some viewers out there are probably, probably not. now. But okay. I just, yeah, I just, what is vaudeville? Can you explain it to me? Vaudeville was just... live entertainment. It was the first coast to coast, big time show business in the United States. It took a long time developing. It's, it's a term that goes back to the Middle Ages in France. We'll skip that. Okay. Um, but it was started in a usage in the United States around 1929, uh, 1829, mm. became a big business after the Civil War. There had been uh, variety saloons uh, that showed entertainment that was uh, basically for men only. And okay. The, okay. Uh, now a lot of the goo goo groups were uh, against that. Uh, the, the serving girls would do their what they call dancing, but it was really showing their laundry. Uh, you know, you'd have uh, a couple of comedians come on stage and uh, insult each other and end up with a f fist fight. And then there was uh, boxing. That was one of the first areas of boxing, uh, prize fighting. And they'd run sometimes 30 rounds bare knuckle until both victor and, uh, and victim were bloody and insensate. Mm -hmm. uh, Anyway, they cleaned it up after the Civil War mm -hmm. uh, because the smart guys realized they didn't want to pay graft anymore. And besides, they were only getting one third of the possible audience. Women and children weren't allowed. So they did. They cleaned it up. It, they needed a fancy name. Variety was a besmirched name. So somebody remembered, oh, vaudeville. That sounds, that's French. It must be classy. So that's <laughs> how vaudeville got started. And it became a huge coast to coast business. Uh, through the 1880s, 1890s, and uh, movies. It was killed off gradually by movies, uh, free radio, network radio, and the Depression, the first Depression, not the one we just had, folks, but, uh, <laughs> are still in. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that was the foundation. And so in, they had all these theaters, almost 5,000 theaters coast to coast, most of them over a period of five or six years, from about 1920 to 1925, converted from vaudeville to film. Okay. Instead of a, a booking agency that sent people around to various theaters, they sent cans of film around to various theaters. A lot cheaper to book a can of film than it is to book a performer. <laughs> yeah, unless you happen to be sour and... Yeah, we, we, work, we, we work for peanuts, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, everybody does now. Unsalted. Anyway, that's what Vaudeville was. It was a live entertainment. It encompassed everything possible that you could expect. Uh, the Barrymores, uh, Sarah Berenhardt was in Vaudeville. So was every uh, low-down comedian, which I liked better. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, it was, a, it was truly mass market entertainment f for the folks it was great that's awesome do you feel did you get caught up now yeah I am caught up now and I see that you've brought some books on okay. vaudeville and you've wrote these books and well these are a collection I was yeah uh, in 1982 we established the American vaudeville museum my life partner and I Donald McNeely who does again the designing for all of our stuff and the bookkeeping in other words he does he, he does all the work mm -hmm. I just come up here and sit on TV shows, hey. uh, and we did. Uh, we were tired of waiting for somebody to recognize vaudeville. There was the Academy of Motion Pictures, there was Broadway, and there was the history of everything. Here's this, here's an, uh, an industry, an entertainment industry that had fifty thousand entertainers in it between 1900 and 1925, um, and beyond. Either way, either direction. So we started the American Vaudeville Museum, and then from 1998 to 19 uh, to 2008, we did uh, 40 issues of Vaudeville Times, and we even did because there is such a thing, folks, as new vaudeville. 
Mm -hmm. uh, Bill Irwin, Bette Midler, mm -hmm. and those things. New vaudeville has lasted almost as long as old vaudeville. <laughs> and a t blurb, we got a blurb in the New York Times in the circuit section, uh, the absurdity of having something as old as vaudeville on, online in a new media. So I get a request from Routledge Press to write an encyclopedia of vaudeville. Ooh, they awesome. wanted 250 to 3,000 uh, to 300,000 words. As you can tell, I don't shut up very easily. <laughs> no, so no, I turned okay, in though. one million, and that's it turned okay. into two volumes. <laughs> got to um, get it done, right? <laughs> it, it took 10 years, but I got it done. Oh, that's awesome. awesome. So we've got about 40 seconds. What do you think about the state? I mean, you brought up new vaudeville. What yeah. do you think? Of, where do you think uh, it'll, things will come around to reintroduce it in a new, new way? Well, it, it's it, it's you know it's back to live performance is what it is. Everybody's working for nickels and uh, you know what they used to call cakes and uh, cakes and ale. Uh, I, I occasionally lecture at UNM on film, and I'm seeing kids watching. F I ask them, where do you? What, mm -hmm. What's your media for this? And they're telling me they're watching them on the small screen. Cool. What's going to So where can people uh, get your books? S same, uh, same website, awesome. www.vaudeville.org. That's amazing. Cool. Thank you so much. So you guys, go ahead and stick with us through the break, and we will come back with uh, our next guest here on Spotlight On. Thank you. When you can't do it all, do what you can. Compassion for others, pass it on. A message from the Foundation for a Better Life. A little time. A little exercise. A little laugh. A little help. He might be in danger of not making it to high school this year if he flunks math. And we just, we just can't have that. A little bit of your support can make a big difference for matches like these. Just ask this high school freshman. Start something today at bigbrothersbigsisters.org slash start something. can't do it all. Do what you can. Compassion for others. Pass it on. A message from the Foundation for a Better Life. 